Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest tonight is a senator and progressive leader who has spent over 40 years in politics. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Senator Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Thanks for being back. Well, congratulations to be performing in front of human beings. I know. <laughs> it's much better. It's, I know. It's much better than just shouting down a pipe. Now, uh, Senator, uh, you were invited, of course, as a senator to be at the speech tonight, but uh, you're I here. much prefer to be here. <laughs> this is nicer than... That we're honored, obviously, but this is nicer than hanging out with your colleagues? Yes. Yeah? Yeah? It is. Okay. Yep. Well, the <laughs> State of the Union is always important, obviously. Um, you know, the all, eyes of the nation are always on what the president, whoever is at that time, is going to say. But it, it feels particularly powerful tonight to see Biden describe in stark terms the fight between freedom and tyranny, the ongoing battle that is not theoretical at this point between democracy and autocracy. What is the significance of tonight's State of the Union, just talk about foreign policy, in the wake of what's happening in Ukraine. Well, it, it cannot be more dramatic. Um, what Putin has done is so outrageous. It is so horrible. It is so cruel uh, that it is unspeakable. And there was a diplomatic solution. We were working on a diplomatic solution, and apparently that's not what he wanted. He wanted to conquer Ukraine, and we're seeing the suffering and the struggle that is going on there. But it brings... I think, uh, to the fore, uh, you know, what politics and, and what everything that we're trying to do is about. And you think back, Stephen, just in the last year of what this country has gone through. I think the president made the point that he made it well. Let's be clear. This is the most difficult moment uh, in our lifetimes. And if you feel depressed and if you feel anxious and you feel confused, you know what? Welcome to the club. That's how all of America feels right now. You just think about what happened. You know, before Biden even took office, we had an insurrection led by a president who is lying to the American people, trying to undermine American democracy. We're now dealing with the pandemic, which soon will claim a million of our fellow Americans and make so many other people sick. We're dealing with climate change. Scientists tell us we're losing the struggle for a planet to leave to our kids that'll be healthy and habitable. Uh, we're dealing with an economy uh, where half of our people are living paycheck to pay paycheck. People can't afford uh, this, this dysfunctional health care system that we have. And then uh, Putin uh, invades Ukraine. So this is just an extraordinary moment uh, in our history, and we have got to be tough. We can do it. The president is right. Uh, but we have to think this thing through not fall for, you know, simplistic solutions. But if we stand together and have the courage to do the right thing in this incredibly difficult moment in history, we can prevail. No, I understand. I'm gonna take... I'm gonna take a wild guess that you're not huge fans with, uh, of Russian oligarch billionaires, okay? And the president said they're gonna go after them, the DOJ is gonna go after these people to take away their, their ill-gotten booty right. that they got for uh, buddying up with Putin. Um, I assume you approve of that. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, look. Wh who upsets you more, American oligarchs or Russian oligarchs? <laughs> we can talk about that. I, ho I, I hope we'll we do. Start, we can start with the Russian oligarchs. We just put something up on our Twitter a page today, it, people don't realize, you know, it's not just that Putin is an autocrat. It's not just that he is a dictator trying to undermine what had been a semblance of democracy in Russia. This guy, we don't know. The truth is nobody really knows. But it is possible that he is the richest guy in the world, maybe worth over $200 billion. 
He and his oligarchic friends have stolen the property of the Russian people. The distribution of wealth in Russia is unbelievable. They got it all uh, while ordinary Russians are suffering. And apparently probably stole some of the military budget because that is one of the explanations why the military equipment is so terrible over there. <laughs> Seriously, that, that, has, been, that has been this speculated. Is, uh, Navalny, uh, who you know is this incredibly brave person, I, and I gotta say something which I don't think is getting enough attention. I have so much respect for these incredibly brave people, often young people in Russia, who are out on the streets protesting against what their president is doing. Knowing that it's, it's been called illegal. Oh, that they will be arrested. They we will be arrested. God knows what will happen to them. You have, you know, celebrities who are putting their names in opposition to the war whose careers will be destroyed. So I think the point to be made is the Russian people are not our enemies. It is their autocracy and the crooks and the evil people who run that country. We have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more Senator Bernie Sanders, everybody.